Luka Berbereski. He's from the breakaway faction from Berlusconi's government, uh, the uh, Future and Freedom Party. Thanks so much for joining me Good now. Morning. Why do you want Berlusconi out? Because I think his time has gone and I think we have so many problems that we have to approach in a different way. From an internal point of view, I mean, in Italy and internationally, we have really to approach in a different way. But he does seem to have more lives than a cat. He survived so many scandals and allegations in the past. What makes you think that this time is different? Well, because I, I think you know, we've been trying to convince him to change his way. There's no way. I think his age has, has a certain, you know, he's 74, 75. And uh, there is no way he's going to change. So uh, we, the only solution we had is to have him out. That's what we, we must do. That's okay, the way. now your party has uh, uh, apparently said that it's going to abstain in the Senate vote as a gesture of goodwill, still trying to persuade Berlusconi yeah. to resign before the vote of no confidence in the lower house, the Chamber of Deputies. Do you think that's likely to happen? Well, uh, I hope so. It's really, it's really embarrassing because we're going to be like, you know, almost even. It's going to be one or two votes that makes the difference. Hopefully one of us, I hope, is going to go ahead with what we discussed last night. And this could make the difference. It's very, it's very funny because I, I wrote a movie before being a congressman 10 years ago. And it was exactly like that. So uh, it's, it's, it's sort of psychodrama. Life, life imitating, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's worse. But are you not concerned, Berlusconi referred to this yesterday, that the Eurozone debt crisis is not over yet. Italy has got the second largest debt in the Eurozone. Are you not worried that political instability could result in financial instability? He doesn't care. You know, he's doing propaganda day after day. I, wrote, I read the Financial Times the other day. But, of course, how many people read the Financial Times in Italy? No one. So he goes on TV. He said, we're going to make the bridge over Messina. We're going to make the bridge over Sardinia. You know, everything is going to be all right. You know, and people, it's an old country, they said, okay, okay, and that's it. Besides, remember, this is a country where almost nobody pays taxes. So the, the idea of having a leader that doesn't pay, you know, <clears throat> that finds you a shortcut to success is always uh, the smartest way to survive. Uh, honestly, I don't like it. There are suggestions, though, that even if Berlusconi falls and if there are, for example, new elections, he owns most of the media in this country, he's a very good campaigner, he could still win those elections. What is it that uh, appeals to uh, Italians and how does it make you as an Italian, as a, uh, as a politician here, uh, to have Mr Berlusconi as your leader? Listen, I gave him my, you know, my faith the first time and the second time was a half and a half. This time I, I prayed on my knees, Mr Fini, to not merge with him. They did it, you know, I, I followed Feeney, now here we are. I think, you know, as I read today on the paper, Mr. Thorne, uh, the ambassador of the United States, declared that our, you know, technical and um, internet, everything is slowed down in Italy to, to help Mr. Berlusconi company to grow. I mean, it's so absurd, everything. So I think we have to fight, fight back. I don't think he's going to win the new election. I don't think he has any chance to be re-elected. Okay, Luca Berbereski.